ਜੇ ਗੁਰਦਾਨ ਕਰਨਾ ਮਿੱਤ ਲੀਲਾ ਅਸਤੂਤ ਰਸਤ ਸੁਖਮਾਨ ਸਤਿ ਰਾਮ ਤੇ ਸਰਵਾਨ ਦੇ ਸ੍ਰੀ ਮਹਾਰਾਜ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਮਿੱਤ ਲਿਆ ਕਲਿਸ਼ਟਮ ਵਿਸ਼ਨੂ ਪਾਦ ਅਸਤੂਤ ਰਸਤਾਂ ਦੇ ਸ੍ਰੀ ਰਾਮ ਤੇ ਸ੍ਰੀ ਮਹਾਰਾਜ ਜੀ ਸਭ ਹਰ ਚਰਨ ਕਮਲ ਦੀ ਆਨੰਦ ਭਰੀ ਸਾਸ਼ਨ ਕਰਦਾ ਹੈ ਉਹ ਚਰਨ ਭਰੀ ਸਭ ਪਸ਼ਚਾਤ ਮਿੱਤ ਲਿਆ ਕਲਿਸ਼ਟਮ ਵਿਸ਼ਨੂ ਪਾਦ ਅਸਤੂਤ ਰਸਤਾਂ ਦੇ ਸ੍ਰੀ ਰਾਮ ਤੇ ਸ੍ਰੀ ਮਹਾਰਾਜ So my obeisance to my Gurudev, Shla Vaman Maharaj, Shla Narayan Maharaj, and also my obeisance to my God brother, Tele Pravista Shla Bhaktivedanta Tita Maharaj, to all also present here. The Vaishnavas were here, Prabhupada Charan, Shepad Damodar Maharaj, Shepad Vaishnav Maharaj, Shepad Bharati Maharaj. So the feet of all the Vaishnavas, Vaishnavis, please accept my Dandavat Pranam. Maharaj, explain very nicely to you about how was Madhavendra Puripad. Madhavendra Puripad used to perform bhajan in a way that he would not ask anything for anyone. He was not even going in asking for donations. In the Gita, Bhagavan says, those who worship me one pointedly, I will provide everything for this person. Whatever the person needs, I will bring to him. In the Gita, it explains. Bhagavan says, hey Arjun, I that person who only worships me not th- also doesn't worship any demigods or demigodesses whatever this person needs with i will carry to him on my own head i will bring to the person and whatever the person already has i will protect it Wherever my devotee has, I will protect it. So in this way, sometimes we have heard the story of uh, Arjun Mishra. And also about uh, Madhavendra Puri. So he used to live Ajachat Bariti means he would not ask for any donation. <coughs> Sorry. But Krishna explains, no one can live in Braj without eating. Like Vraja will always provide for everyone. No one fasts. Like no one uh, like starves. No one starves in Braj. Why? Because Shmati Radka, she's the Maharani of Braj. She's the protector of Braj. That's why no one starves in Braj. No one will be hungry. So in this way, herself, Shmati Radka takes care of all the Brajabasis. Shastra explains. And Krishna, what's he doing? Krishna takes care of his devotees. We heard how Madhavendra Puripada, he was worshipping Lord without asking anything from anyone. Sometimes he would eat, sometimes not. He was just chanting holy names, absorbed. So Krishna came and asked, Baba, my mom saw you and she sent some milk for you because whole day you were here without eating. So Madhavendra Puri asked, how did you know I was without eating? Then Krishna said, my mother came here to fetch water and she saw you, she saw you, that you were alone sitting there and so my mom, that's why she sent this milk for you, okay? So Madhavendra Puripada is performing bhajan and singing Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Balak ka jokhan 
When the boy left, then Mother Vendor Pada thought, who is that boy? He's such a beautiful boy that like stole my mind. Oh, how beautiful, how beautiful. Then he drank the milk, oh, how delicious milk, how delicious. Then he thought, oh, it's not an ordinary meal, not ordinary boy. So, then Madhavena Prabhupada took rest, chanting holy names. He fell asleep. I mean, he shut his eyes, right? Then he was singing again and again that boy. That boy who had brought... Die. So, that boy who has brought the milk, oh, so, actually what happened, there was, the deity was there, Gopal, and Gopal was thinking, when Madhavendra Puripada will come to serve me, because the deity was there of Gopal, but the Muslims came, attacked, so that's why the Pujari kept the deity uh, under the ground. This Gopal had been stalled by Vajranab, the great grandson of Krishna. When Krishna left this material world, after some days, the great grandson of Krishna called Vajranab, he uh, established many temples in Braj, many deities. My name is Gopal, and afraid of uh, the Muslims, Pujari has uh, buried me under the ground. For many days I've been under the ground, they told. Please uh, take me out of the ground and serve me. So in the in the dream, also the date it showed to Madhavendra Puripada where he was buried. Then Madhavendra Puripada woke up from the dream. He s he woke up and he was like, "Oh, what did I see in my dream? That beautiful boy." Beautiful curly haired boy. You know curly hair. Very beautiful curly hair. So beautiful, blackish boy. His beauty defeats even the beauty of the fresh rain cloud color. Such a beautiful boy. He was like laughing to me. Then early in the morning, Madhavendra Puripad. He told Brajabasis about the where the date was buried, so they ca he came with other Brajabas. Then they like dig, dug, no, dig. I mean, they dig the ground, dig the ground, and to find Gopal. And yeah, he was there. So Madhavendra Puripad established the deity, and also made a nice temple for the deity. For one month, how much time? One month, 30 days. They did in Braj what? Anakurt Mahamahotsa for Gopal. The, the rich people of Mathura so they heard that Madhavendra was doing this Anakurt festival of Prashada. So all the rich people they helped. In the Bhagavatam we hear about the Anakurt that was held for one day for Giriraj. But Madhavena Puripada, for one complete month, for one month, he did Madhavena uh, Nakut Mahamahotsav. Serving the deity so well, offering milk, yogurt, honey, sugar, like, you know, doing the Abhishek of the date with milk, yogurt, honey, and the ghee also, and a great festival for a month. And the deity himself told us so after. 
Hema the Bendrapuri. For many days I was buried under the ground. So now I'm feeling so much hot in my body. I'm feeling this heat. So go to the South India and bring for me the Malai Chandan, the sandalwood, the special sandalwood. So to take the, dev dev the service of his devotees, Bhagavan is so eager to take to receive the service of his devotees. Then Madhavendra Puripada, what did he do? Even he was, even though he was old, aged, he went to South India, walking. And then he, Kir Chora Gopinath. So, when he was there in the, like, Ramana on the way, he saw the Arati and everything uh, to of uh, Gopinath. And then in the time of Arati, Madhavena Puripad later, he felt one de delicious smell. Then he asked to the Pujari, what are you offering? Very nice. And then Pujari said, oh, we are offering here the Amrit Keli Kheer, one special sweet rice, like condensed milk. Then in his mind, Madhavena Puripad was thinking, if if I would also take taste this Amrit Keli Kheer, this special sweet rice, if I would taste it, this condensed condition milk special, I'll be able to serve my Gopal and Govardhan in the same way also. So Bhagavan is so eager for the service of his devotees. So after the altar was closed, Madhavina Puripada went in the market and he sat down and was chanting Hare Krishna. So it was already very late at night. Then the deity, Gopinath, gave a, um, order to the Pujari in his... And the Pujari, deity told the Pujari, every day you offer 12 pots of uh, this sweet rice for me. But today I have kept one of these pots. I have stolen. And I <laughs> put it under my altar, my throne, like my... So because I wanted to give this for one devotee who is in the market. His name is Madhavena Puripad. Give to him. He's my great devotee. The Pujari woke up it was in the dream. Huh? So Pujari uh, he bathed to uh, chant his Gaiti Mantra, went inside the temple. So he saw one of those clay pots with the kheer, with the sweet rice. The condensed milk. Then <laughs> Pujari was calling out in the market, Who is Madhavendra Puri? Who is Madhavendra Puri? For you, Gopinath has stolen this clay pot. Go, Uru Premanandi. At least give the Ulu. <laughs> so if you give. If you give Ulu Dwani, then I think, oh, the Bengali mothers are sitting here. If you don't do it, I'm thinking all of you are Hindustani, like from North India, like Delhi, etc. So this is the, in the, this is the Bengali culture. Chaitanya Charitamta explains also. In other uh, states of India, parts of India, they don't have this culture. This culture of Bengal is, is it giving the Ulu Dwani, making the sound for women. In other countries, other places, you don't find this. So... But people who are not Bengalis, they laugh when they see the Bengali mothers doing the Ulu Dwani. But the sound of Ulu is so auspicious, so auspicious, this Ulu sound. Other people don't know about it. Shastra explains also. If you give Ulu Dwani the sound of Ulu, Bhagavan is so happy. God becomes more pleased if you do the Ulu sound than if you play the conch. Like if you play the conch, like you know the conch. God is pleased, but he's even more pleased if you do the Ulu sound. So if you go, they give some Ulu sound, 
Bhagavan will become so pleased. Especially Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He becomes so pleased with the Ulu sounds. Other people, they even try, but they cannot. They try to also do that sound, but they cannot do the proper sound of Bengalis. Like the Chinese, Malati, what is Malati? She will be able to do also the sound. Malati Didi, she's their best Chinese. She's a Chinese Didi. So maybe others will try, but the beautiful Ulu sound that the Bengali mothers, they give, God becomes so pleased. Right? So, so you have in the middle give some Ulu Dhani. Nitai Gaura Pramana. So nice. So the Pajari said, Who is Madhavendra Puripada? Gopal has stolen the key for you. So Madhavendra Puripada was in that market. Everything was closed. It was like a night time. So he came and said, Oh, my name is Madhavendra Puri. Then the Pujari gave this kheer to him, like a pot of this uh, condensed milk of uh, sweet rice. Then he, he tried a little bit, and all the symptoms of ecstasy manifest in his heart, all the symptoms of ecstasy. Because this prashad of Bhagavan. So Shastra explains that Mahaprasad Gobinde. Those who have less sukriti, they will not have faith in four things. Which four things? Mahaprasad, name of Govinda, the deity, and the Vaishnav. But these are trans transcendental things. Many glories of Mahaprasad are there, so many glories. So when Madhavendra Puripad takes the kir, took the kir, all the symptoms of ecstasy, rom, uh, repilation, uh, shaking, tears, all came in his heart. He even, you know, the clay pot, he also like bro broke it and he would also kept the pot also. And sometimes he would also touch the clay pot, like uh, eat the small, small piece of clay pot that he had crushed, like made the, like powder, because what? There was also a little bit of kirin in each particle of the clay pot, right? So, Madhavendra Puripada, he knew that the Pujari would tell everyone that he was a Siddha Mahatma, like a great saint. That's why Krishna uh, separated, kept that prasad for him. So, afraid of being, uh, of receiving so much honor, fame, and reputation, Madhavendra Puripada left in the middle of the night. But the name, fame, and reputation ran after him, like he couldn't escape it, being famous. So, yeah, really the Pujari told everyone, the deity has stolen the, the key for that devotee. Jai. You again didn't do the Uludwani. Oh, because Gurudev said, Kirchora Gopinath Ki Jai, because he became known as the Gopinath who stole the key from Madhavendra Puri. And Jai, but the girl, the ladies didn't do the Uludwani. One more time, Gurudev said, why didn't you do? And again, I told you. Do the Ulu sound. So actually you have to, when you do, they, the date is listening. When you do the Ulu sounds, it's so auspicious, the date is hearing. So when you speak the date name, you should do the Ulu sound. So in the, in the Vedas are something that, which is called Mangala Bachak, words of auspiciousness. For example, the Gayatri Mantra has the Om. These are Mangala Bachak, Pranab, the Om is auspiciousness. And Ulu, the sound is also... God becomes so pleased with the Ulu sound, it's also so auspicious. It's a Mangala so auspicious sound, Mangala Dhwani. Again! <laughs> Good. So, Madhavendra Puripada. So he was trying to run away from the fame, but the fame came running from him. So then Madhavendra Padipada went to South India. Mm -hmm. 
Then he went off in the to try to collect sandalwood for the deity, right? And also some camphor. He was already old aged. He couldn't walk so much. And then the deity told himself, told, told to him when he was coming back, told him, look, this Malai Chandan, this Malai sandalwood you brought, you can put on my body Gopinath. Like Gopinath gave him, came in the dream of uh, Madhavendra when he was coming back from the South India. He said, you can also apply this body, this sandalwood on my body because date is only one. There's no difference between Gopinath and Gopal. So you can apply this sandalwood in me. Actually, it's an offense if you see difference in God, like in the forms of God. God is only one, but he manifests in a different way according to the mood of the devotee in different occasions. According to the devotee and how the devotee wants to serve Bhagavan, then Bhagavan will come and appear to that devotee in that specific way, in a beautiful way, specific to the mood of the devotee. So Madhavendra Puripan, he also uh, made the sandalwood paste, you know, like uh, rubbing the sandalwood and creating the paste, and he applied it in the body of Gopinath. You know, in the day of Akshaya Tritya, you, we also celebrate that, this day of applying the sandalwood in the deity. For one month. Actually, every day we also op should offer this sandalwood to the deity. This is in the Shastras. The Pujari every day has to apply. But, especially in the time of Akshaya Tritya, for one month, it's like it's really hot at the time of the year. So you, you mix the sandalwood with the camphor and then you apply it in the body of the deity. The deity will be cool, like it will be good, like fresh. No? So Bhagavan is so eager to receive the service of his devotees, so eager. So this teaching to us. So Madhavendra Puripada is the Premankur, the sprout of love in our Gauriya Vaishnavas. Three people have told this verse. Who? Who was the first person to tell this verse? Shmati Radhika. When? When Krishna, he was in Vandavan and he left from Mathura. Then Shamati Radhika in that moment, she was feeling so much separation of Krishna. She manifested that bhav in this verse. I drina dayada nata he matura nata. Radharani was feeling this transcendental madness. Second person who told this verse was Madhavendra Puripad. Madhavendra Puripad, he is Prema Ankur, the sprout of love in our Guru Parampara. And then, third person who told this verse was Mahaprabhu. No fourth person told really this verse, really. Only three people. This verse is so high class verse, like so exalted. So, I, those who want to enter this realm of Prem, this transcendental madness of Shemati Radhika. You see, the Bhagavatam explains about this. Ujjalpa, Sujjalpa, all these transcendental speeches of Shemati Radhika. This is the Brahma Gita, transcendental talks, like mad. So, Madhavendra Puripada is not an ordinary person at all. His Prema Ankur, the sprout of love. So this love came to Ishura Puripada also, who was the disciple of Madhavendra Puripada. So Panavendra Puripada had, had many disciples, but two were special. Like one was Ishwara Puripad and another was so another disciple he had mm. 
Later he became just like a, my avadi seeing the faults. What is his name? <coughs> Even like this another disciple, Ramachandra Puri, he said, Oh, he, he invited Mahaprabhu to eat, but then he was... Then he was even criticizing Mahaprabhu, saying he was eating too much. He was, uh, he was always criticizing. So... Madhavana Puripad gave the wealth of Prem to Ishwara Puri. And Ishwara Puri gave to Mahaprabhu. Then Mahaprabhu gave this wealth of Prem to Rupa Goswami. Rupa Goswami, you know, then gave to Jiva Goswami, Raghunathas Goswami, Krishna Das Kavraj Goswami. And this Prem is coming in our Guru Parampara nowadays. Until nowadays. Madhavana Puripad, he is the Shingaras Ankur, the sprout of Shingaras. So, the name of Madhavendra Puripad is very special in our Guru Parampara. Mahaprabhu, Mahaprabhu told a very beautiful Katha, I was very happy. So, God will always arrange everything for His pure devotees. Like in the Gita, Krishna says that he will always help, protect and give everything the one-pointed devotees need. If God wants to protect you, nobody can kill you. If God wants to kill you, no one can protect you. Isn't it? We also see this in the Mahabharata war. Parakit Maharaj was in the womb of his mother, Uttara. And the son of Dronacharya called Ashottama, he sent, he, he threw the Brahmastra, aiming to the womb of Uttara. I'll just speak a little bit of Mahabharata to you. So in the war of Kurukhetra, the Kurukhetra war was over. The war lasted 18 days. The, law, the war lasted 18 days. So in the 17th, no, no. So on the 17th day, Dushasana was killed. And the 18th day, the tie of Duryodhan was, um, how to say, broken. So Duryodhan, he was dying on the left, how to say, in the, like in the death, death bed, death bed. Like he was about to die, you know, Duryodhan. He was just waiting for his last breath. After, after some time, he would die. He was just waiting. But the Pandava was already so happy. Oh, we won, we won. Then Krishna told the pan told Pandavas, told the Pandavas, look, if if you even break the 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 back of a snake, the snake can even come back. That's why actually to kill a snake you need to burn the snake. Because you know maybe the snake some maybe you think you kill the snake, but this then the snake maybe she will take revenge on you. She hasn't even she's not really dead. So, like you cannot, you know, even though you kill the snake, you need to like, like burn it. Otherwise it can come back and kill you. So Krishna is trying to tell the Pandavas, don't think you've won yet. Duryodhana is still alive. But Pandavas didn't care for what Krishna was saying. Actually Krishna had to do this Leela, one more Leela. Which Leela? The five sons of Draupadi and also the brother of Draupadi. Dushta Dumna had to be killed, yeah. right? So and this Lila was still left to be performed. Everything depends on Krishna, this is true. So the Pandavas were so happy, thinking they won. Ah, Jodan is dead. 
they were like partying, like they were celebrating. But oh. so what happened? Krishna told the Pandavas that night the tent where Pandavas used to sleep actually they moved, they went to sleep in another tent and uh, the five sons of Pandavas and brother of Draupadi they came to sleep in the tent where the Pandavas used to sleep generally so what happened? Duryodhana, he was in the death bed almost ready to die and it was like night time it was really dark night there was even some like thunders and lightning and some um, sound of like uh, jackals and animals so Duryodhana was just waiting to give his last breath you know then in this moment the son of Dronacharya called Ashwatthama he told oh my friend if you had even made me the general of the army, commander army of for even one day I'll be able to I would be able to win the war. But never in the war you give me the position of being the general or the commander in chief. You gave this position to Bhishma Pitamaha and to Karna. But not to me. You didn't give to me. If you had even for one day you had given me this position actually not even one day, one moment I would have won this war for you. If you had given me this position of being the general of the army of the Kauravas, I would have won this war. Then Duryodhana said, okay, but now what to do, right? I'm about to die. And so the, um, Ashwatthama said, you are still alive, so you can make me general commander-in-chief now. But Duryodhana said, now war is over, finish, in, and nobody can uh, fight in evening time also, night time. But then Duryodhana said, okay, then he took the blood of, of his thigh, because remember, Bhim had broken the thigh of uh, Duryodhana. So he took uh, blood from his thigh, and with his own blood, he made like a tilak, like a cor making the, um, he put on the forehead of uh, Ashotama and said, okay, now you are the general, the commander. But you know, so remember, who was sleeping in the tent of the Pandavas? The five sons of Draupadi and the Sadyumna. And Sh Shivaji, Bhagavan had told Shiva, oh, today you have to guard this tent. It was really like dark night, you know, very deep dark night, you know. So Ashwatthama came there, but he started to pray to Shiva. Shiva was guarding the tent, but Shiva is so simple, right? So when, when Ashwatthama was praying to Shiva, Shiva allowed him to go inside of the tent. Shiva said, okay, ask for a benediction, he told Ashwatthama. Like Shiva is not thinking about himself. You know the story of Basmasur, also we see this. Brikasur or Basmasur, it's explained in the Shemad Bhagavatam that demon who get the, the benediction to kill w if he would put his hand on someone's head that person would become ashes right so Ashutama said I just want to go inside the tent just to see I just want to check how are the five Pandavas I just want to check on them I will just enter so he entered inside and with the bow and arrow very quickly he cut off the heads of the five persons were inside the tent then he took the five heads their five heads also and he came outside so he brought only the heads five heads he brought along with him Ashwatthama and he gave to Duryodhan oh my friend Duryodhan you've won you've won look that person who killed your hundred brothers who also is killed you almost it's his head is here then Drujodhan you know what he did Drujodhan took the biggest head oh give me the head of beam so he started pressing the head 
and with this uh, strength of Duryodhana's body. <coughs> so, uh, like Duryodhana was pressing the head of Bhim and the head like meshed like, like this. Then Duryodhana said, no, this is not Bhim's head. Not, it's not his head. Because many times I've hit, I've hit Bhim with my gada, my mace, many times. And the sound was coming, tan, 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 when the mace was beating on the head of Bhim. And this head, just with my hands, I could mash it. This is not, I crash it. This is not original Bhim head. And in this moment, what happened, there was a lightning also. <laughs> and then Duryodhana was able to see what was there. Duryodhana said, this is the head of the son of Bhim, not Bhim. Then Duryodhana said, hey Ashottama, my fight was against the Pandavas. My hatred was against them, not their sons. I didn't have any, nothing to do with the sons of the Pandavas. You've destroyed all the dynasty. What did you do? Then Duryodhana just died at the moment. Ashottama thought. But the four Pandavas are still alive. The five Pandavas are still alive. They will revenge. So I have to do Prashita atonement, Ashotama thought. So Ashotama went until Vyasadev to try to do atonement. So, but Krishna is Swami Bhagavan. So Swami Bhagavan told Pandavas and also Draupadi told them, look, Draupadi, now it's very late at night. Let's go to the tent. So when the Draupadi and the Pandavas came to the tent, they saw only the bodies without head. Who cut this head? Draupadi was desperate. Oh, my brother and my five sons have been killed. Then Arjun and Bhim, they sent out, they left out, like they ran out, I mean they left, went off to try to meet the person, they saw the arrow and they realized it was Ashwatthama's arrow. Then Bhim and Arjun, they went off to, to find Ashwatthama. Running, running, Swami Bhagavan also went with him, with them, okay. So what happened? Ashwatthama said, Prabhu, Ashwatthama was asking Vyasadev which atonement he should do. And immediately at this moment, Bhim and Arjun came. Oh, you want to do atonement? We will arrange for your atonement. <coughs> so when they heard, when Ashwatthama heard their voices, he, he looked behind and he saw just like the big death waiting for him, Bhim and Arjun. Then Ashwatthama ran away, trying to escape. He was running, running, and Bhim and Arjun running beh behind him, like uh, kept chasing him. So he was thinking, what to do? So then Ashwatthama used his Brahmastra, used the Brahmastra, the weapon. Then also Krishna told Arjuna, use the Brahmastra also. So one Brahmastra was going against another. One Brahmastra is enough to destroy the whole universe. Imagine two, Brahm two Brahmastras. What are you doing? You'll destroy all the earth, everything. You'll destroy the creation. So Vyasadeva said, Ashwatthama, bring it back, like the, the weapon. But Ashwatthama said, I only know how to send it, to shoot it, not to, to cancel it. It's like, bring the, the Brahmasa back. I cannot do that, to cancel the weapon. Then Bhagavan said, Arjun, so you do that. Then Arjun took the Brahmasa back. So, so they said, okay, change the direction of the Brahmasa. They told Ashwatthama, change the direction. Put it to the, the, the sky, to the, you know, the space. But Ashwatthama, he was so evil. 
and you know he th yeah. those were wicked they try into the last moment huh? so Ashotama like they try to do maharam until the last moment so Ashotama changed the direction and put the Brahmastra with aiming the womb of Uttara Uttara was pregnant and she started shaking Krishna 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 oh Krishna protect me then Swayam Bhagavan Krishna entered the womb of Uttara and then there Krishna with his mace Gada he destroyed completely the Brahmastra and in this way she was pregnant then Pradikit Maharaj was born from her womb like he was in the womb right when the Brahmastra came so that's why <coughs> sorry his name is Parikit and also Vishnurat same name like same same person Vishnurat because he was protecting the womb by Krishna so the name of Parikit Maharaj is also called Vishnurat because Bhagavan Vishnu protected him protected him while he was in the womb another meaning also another name also he says Parikit means Parikshit when he was in the womb of his mother he saw Krishna right so and also like he was like I like to say like um, analyzing testing oh this Krishna I saw in the womb is Krishna who is outside that I like is that so God I saw in the womb like this like he was examining like this oh this Krishna I saw in the womb is the is Krishna like this so then Bhimya and Arjuna wanted to kill Ashotama then Bhagavan said look who is uh, he made an offense to Draupadi because he killed the sons of Draupadi so let's go to Draupadi and whatever whatever um, punishment she decides she, he'll have to suffer but Bhagavan knew that actually Ashotama couldn't be killed because he would be alive for like four yugas actually until nowadays Ashotama he's inside Vrindavana in some forest those who are like fortunate some saints they see him sometimes his body is very big very tall shall I explain in the next Sata Yuga then there will be another Treta Yuga in the Dapara Yuga of next next Dapara Yuga this Ashwatama he will be the Vyas so he stay alive for four yugas so Krishna said cannot kill him actually so what to do so Ashwatama had one jewel on his head then they removed that jewel from his head and when they removed this jewel the body of Ashwatama became really weak really weak completely weak So Draupadi <laughs> crying, she said, if we kill Ashotama, my sons will come back to life? No. So we don't need to kill him. So Parikit Maharaj was protected by God himself. They tried to kill him. He was trying, he was attempted, like the Ashotama attempted to kill him even using the Brahmastra like a very lethal weapon but Bhagavan protected Parikshit so if God wants to protect you no one can kill you so this is one example another example if God wants to kill you no one can protect you so this is another example also in the Mahabharata war we have the same ex this uh, another example also for this other case if God wants to kill you then no one can protect you so the son of Arjun Abhi sorry Abhi Abhimanyu was killed by uh, Jayadrat so Arjuna promised tomorrow before sunset I will kill the person who killed my son if I won't be able to kill Jayadrat who has killed my son Arjuna promised that I will immolate myself like I'll throw myself inside the fire so the Kauravas, Kauravas they were trying somehow to protect the Adrat. What is his name? 
So the Kauravas were trying to protect Jayadratha. Because if Arjuna wouldn't be able to kill Jayadratha, Arjuna himself would throw himself in the fire, like he would kill himself. And everybody knew Ar Arjuna was the best, right? So if Arjuna would be killed, then of course the Kauravas would be able to win the war. So the Kauravas, they tried so much to protect Jadrat. How they put Jadrat very far in the in the l battlefield, like really in the end, in the back of the battlefield. Or John had to defeat each warrior to try to come to the end of the battlefield to get Jadrat. So, but the time was passing. It was almost time of like, you know, when the sun sets, they play the sh the conch, isn't it? Like, just like when you play the conch, you do the uludwani, like we do the sound ulu. So in the same way, if this if the, if the war would be over in the sunset, every sunset they play the conch. Bow the conch, meaning the war is over because you cannot fight in during the night, right? So what happened was Arjun was trying to go quickly before the sunset, but something happened and suddenly it was like night time, and then they blew the conch like war is over, it's already sunset. So Arjun will have to kill himself. So they prepared the big fire, and the code of us. Kauravas came to s watch also with Jedrat. And they were so happy, like, ah, ha, ha, Arjuna will kill himself. What is, like, you know, we won. Arjuna said, I promise and I have to protect my vow, right? I have to kill myself. Then Bhagavan told Arjun, Arjun, why don't you take your Gandiv, your bow and arrow with you? Then Arjun said, why will I take my bow and arrow if I'm going to kill myself? Then Krishna said, just take it. Then because Bhagavan said, Arjun, he took his bow and arrow along with him to kill himself in the fire. So he paid to the fire and was about to jump. And the Kauravas were around like laughing, like mocking him. Ha ha ha. And Jadrata also doing this. Arjun was about to jump in the fire. Then Bhagavan said, Har Arjun, take your Gandiv. Uh, rise, sorry, rise your Gandhiv, like uh, uh, aim your bow and arrow, you know, aim it. Like, make it ready to shoot because you kill this Jadat which is just in front of you. Then everybody said, Dharma, Dharma. This against the rules, but because this was already like night time. Then Bhagavan said, Actually, the war is not over. It's not night time yet. It's not. Then Bhagavan, you know what he did? He removed the Sudarshan chakra because actually, with the chakra, Krishna had cover the sun, you know, with the Sudarshan Chakra. So Krishna took back the Sudarshan Chakra and it, everybody saw the sun was still in the sky. Actually, it was like even midday. It's like it was really early yet. Then, Jadrat started to run off. Then Krishna said, kill him. Then Arjun shoot, shot the Gandiv, his bow and arrow, and killed Jadrat. But actually to kill Jadrata was not easy because he had a benediction, Jadrata had a benediction from his father that if somebody would cut off his head and his, the head of Jadrata would uh, touch the ground, then that person who had killed him, his head would be cut off also in pieces, like it, was, it would explode. So that's why Bhagavan said, Gandiv, you cut out, Krishna told Arjun, with your Gandiv, cut out his head, like remove his head, and then put his he head falling in the lap of his father. You know, so yeah, at, at that time, the father of uh, Jadat, he was giving offering of to the water, and immediately, exactly at the moment, the, the head of his son fell on his hand, the hand of the father of Jadrat. So in this way, the head of Jad, father of Jadat also exploded, both died.
So if God wants to protect you, no one can can save you. If God wants to save you, no one can kill you. If God wants to kill you, no one can protect you. Shasta explains. Why am I saying this? We have to always be have enthusiasm. We have to have enthusiasm in our spiritual life. God is with us. In Hindi we say, you are not alone. Ram is always with you. Chant Sitaram and live the way the Lord wants to keep you. Give the ropes of your life in the hands of God. You are not alone, my dear. Ram is always with you. Chant Sitaram. Just live the Lord, live the way Lord wants to keep you. Live as live, take live your life as like Lord wants to keep you. Give the ropes of your life into the hands of God. You are not alone. God is always with you. You want to get name, fame, and reputation, right? But you cannot that that if it's not desire for not not the desire of God. If it's the desire of God, then you'll be able to get name, fame, and reputation, honor. You want to get so much honor and respect, but you won't be able to get if it's not the desire of Bhagavan. Chant the names of Sitaram. Just keep one relationship with God. Leave all other relationships. Just have one hope. Only hope we have is God. Give up all other hopes. Take the rope, the rope of your life and give t give it to the hands of God. He can control you. Don't you're never alone. Lord is always with you. Only one hope we have, God. Give up all other hopes. Only one relationship matters. Our relationship with God. Nothing else matters. Chant Sitaram name. We have only one hope. Which hope? How to attain Bhagavan. All other relationships just don't matter. Just give it up. So we must have some again, knowledge relationship with Bhagavan. If we have that, never ever you will fall down. And Bhagavan will never leave you. Le leave you. So I want to t tell you a nice story. Have you been to Barshana? So there was one like businessman. Like a person who has a business in a shop. He had three sons. His sons were grown up, they got married with nice ladies, also his three, three sons. In Brindavana they call Sid, somebody who has money. So let's call him Sergi. Everybody used to call him Sergi because he was really rich, like really a lot of money. So there in Brindavana they call this kind of person Sergi. In here, how do you call this kind of people? Oh, no one has money, so you don't call it. <laughs> anyway, Sergi. So his three sons got married and all, but he, he his wife had passed away. So every day he used to go to his shop. Then he used to come back to his house, take prashad and sleep. So his three daughters-in-law in were in the house. But daughters-in-law will not speak so much with the father-in-law, right? The daughters-in-law, they don't speak much with the father-in-law. So he was very upset. Like he was feeling lonely. Then one saint came and saw this Sergi, this like rich man, and said, Sorry, 
the 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 Sergi saw this the saint and he cried, started crying. Saint asked, "Why are you crying?" Then he said, "Look, I have three son three sons and three daughters-in-law. My wife has passed away, but my life seems so dry now. Why?" My wife, um, sorry, I just, my life's like mechanical life. I just wake up, work, come back, nothing. I don't speak too much with anyone because my wife has passed away. And if I had a daughter, then if I would have a daughter, then I'll be able to speak to my daughter and it'll be good. Then the saint, the sadhu told him, look. Actually, you are already so fortunate because you were born in Barshana. Where? In Barshana. You were born in Barshana. You were so fortunate, actually. To be born in Barshana, Nandagaon. It's such a matter of good fortune. So much good fortune. Many, many lives of Sukriti. It's necessary to be born in Barshana. The birthplace of Shmateratka is not an ordinary place. So the Sadhu said, and Shmatratka is the Hladini potency of God. So the Sadhu said, you are so fortunate. Why? So in Barshana, everybody sees Shmatratka as a daughter. Actually, everyone in Nandagaon sees Krishna as their son. And those who live in Barshana, everyone thinks also, Shmatratka is my daughter. Right? So the people of Varshana, they don't even drink the water of Nandagaon. Why? Because they think, my daughter, Radharani, she's not only the daughter of Vrishabhana Maharaj. Like all Varshana Vasis, they think, Shmatanatka is my daughter as well. So she got married in Nandagaon because she got married to Krishna. So, so I will not drink the water there. Because if you give the donation of your daughter to some to some family or to a place, you don't drink the water of that family. Like you don't accept anything from them. Because you because you already gave your daughter to them. Guru Deva told one story. One day, a person from Barshana, he was, he had a very big field, agricultural field. He would go, this his field would go until the um, border of Nandagaon. So he was plowing the field, but he was feeling so thirsty, he even like fainted in on the gown because he was uh, plowing his field and it was really hot. Then somebody came brought and brought water to him. He said, no, I'll not drink water him here. I won't drink this water because my daughter got married here. So this Nishta, right? So the sadhu was telling this uh, rich man, you already have a daughter, Shumati Radhika. Everyone in Bashana thinks Shumati Radhika is their daughter. So the sadhu gave one photo of Shumati Radhika to the rich man and said, Hey rich man, when you go to sleep, embrace and kiss this photo like she's your daughter. And before you sleep. So yeah, the rich man before sleeping, he would embrace and also kiss the photo of Shmatratka before going to sleep. Then as soon as he would sleep, immediately Shmatratka would appear in his dream, dancing. You know that Kirtan in Braj? So when he would sleep, immediately Shumatirat would come in his dream, beautiful and smiling, curly hair, so beautiful, so pretty, so gorgeous, Shumatirat, also she had anklets in her feet, so beautiful, chum 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 nache, like she was dancing and the anklets were also making jingling sound, ching ching ching, like this. 
so the, during the whole night the, the rich man was dreaming with Shimataratka and Shimataratka dancing. So many, some days passed. You know, in Braj there are some many festivals. In these festivals, women they use uh, wear bangles. So her, his three daughters-in-law they said, "Oh, father, like father-in-law." So they did a special festival. We want to wear the bangles. Then they said, "Okay." Sorry, he said, father-in-law said, "Okay." When I'll be on my way to the shop. I will go to the shop of the man who seal, sells bangles and he will come here and he will give you new bangles and you can take from him, from him. So on the way to his work, the Sergi told, the rich man told the bangle seller, look, go to my house and give, give the bangles to my daughters-in-law and the money from this bangles I will give to you you come to my shop 6 p.m. and I'll give you money you know those who are uh, I have to say merchants they don't give money easily like they really consider before paying anything and giving money so he said come to my shop 6 p.m. and then I will see and give you the money so yeah, when the bengal seller came, the three daughters-in-law came, and you know in Vraj they always cover the head with the gungum means gungum. They cover the head with veil. You know the sari, the end of the sari. They completely cover the, the head. The veil, veil, veil. So anyway, the bengal seller gave the the bangles co many color bangles to them and then he left he didn't see their face because they were covering their face with the veil with the veil then but when the daughters in law had left then another small girl came and also she like stretched out her hand the bangle seller thought oh she also li lives here so he also put the, the bangles on her wrists and also left So in the end of the day, 6 p.m., the bengal sellers came and said, okay, this is the amount you owe me for the bengals. Oh, this is too much. Oh, I only have three daughters in law. Then the bengal seller said, no, no, but there was a fourth girl. A fourth girl also came. And I gave bengals to her. What? Fourth person? No, no, my wife has passed away. You're lying. There's not fourth four girls in my house, four ladies, only three. The bengal seller said, I am not lying, I'm telling the truth. If you want to give me the money, you give, otherwise, no, I am not insisting. So the rich man said, okay, I'll give you money for three, the bengals are three persons. Later check who was this fourth person. That day, the rich man, the Sergi, was really tired. He took prasadam, and just like his habit was, he would embrace and kiss the photo of Shmateratka. Then he went to sleep. But then he saw, sorry, in the front of the photo of Shmateratka, there were some bangles, like there. And then the Sergi thought, oh, I think my. You know the bengal seller solo gave these bengals to my to my daughters-in-law and they are, they just put here just to show to me and okay he didn't give any attention so he went to sleep just like usual he shut his eyes but today shimataradka was not coming to his dream he tried so much but he tried to meditate in shimataradka but she she wa wasn't coming and in his dream, he was calling out, Hey Radhe, daughter, why are you not giving me darshan? Like he was crying even. Mm -hmm. Then he saw that very far, Shumateradka, she was facing down, looking down and crying. This everything, everything in the dream, okay? Then he said, Radharani, daughter, why are you crying? She also didn't say anything. Do you know, 
He insisted, insisted that what she said was This is a Kirtan of Braj. You remember your three daughters-in-law, but you didn't remember your own daughter. You gave the money for the for the bangles of your three daughters-in-law, but not you didn't pay for my bangles. You consider me your daughter, but you're not uh, having, you're not keeping your duties as a father. So you accept me as a father, but. But you're not like following your duties as a father, like you're not really keeping this relation, right? You remember only three daughters in law, but you forgot your own daughter. If you really had a relationship with me, so why didn't you pay for my bangles? Shamatradki is saying. Why didn't you pay for my bangles? You gave the money for the bangles of your daughter's in law, but why didn't you give for mine? First of all, you forgot to count me. And then the money of my bangles you didn't give, didn't pay. So what is our relationship? So she's saying. Then the rich man, the Sergi thought, oh, this is true. That's why the Bengal Sadar said there were four ladies in my house. I only counted three. But my daughter was in my house. Which 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 daughter? Radha Rani Ki Jai. I have to finish the kata. So he was crying and praying for her. Hirade. I'll never again commit this mistake. Ever again. I will forget you. Ever again. Never again. So when he woke up, when he woke up, immediately, very quickly, he woke up, he bathed, and then he went immediately to the house of the... Um, the house of the uh, mango seller, and he paid. But the Bengal seller said, no, I don't want. This is my good fortune. I put bangles in the hand of, in the wrist of Shemati Radhika. Whoa. But the, the Sergi, the rich man said, if you don't, don't take this money, Shemati Radhika could not be pleased with me. So, firstly, he gave. So, when he came back to his house, remember those bangles which were in front of the photo of Shemati Radhika? They disappeared, like Shemati Radhika took them. So then this captain of Braj explains how Shemati Radhika was dancing then. Mm -hmm. 
बासे ऊंची लाली कहां तेरो घर रे मैंने बासे ऊंची ला कहां तेरो घर आसास के बता भी मोते बसना मेरो घर रे आसास के बता भी बसना मेरो घर ए छोटी सी पिचोरी मेरी तुमनो नाम में डोले रे छोटी सी पिचोरी मेरी तुमनो नाम हर पाव में पाव लिया बके चमचमा चम बोले रे पाव में पाव लिया बके ए ये बासे पूछी लाली कहा तेरो सुसुराल रे मैंने बासे पूछी लाली कहा तेरो सुसुराल शर्मा का के बोले मोसे जाबर गांव सुसुराल रे शर्मा का के बोले मोसे जाबर गांव सुसुराल रे मैंने बासे पूछी लाली कौन तेरो बता रे मैंने बासे पूछी लाली अरे मस्कारा के बोले मोसे सैम मेरो बता रे मस्कारा के बोले मोसे सैम मेरो Clap, clap, at least clap. The Vraja Vasi ladies they dance a lot with these kittens. Jai Gurudev. 